Welcome to I Lecture Online, and now we're going to take a look at what we call the normal distribution table. Again, remember, here we have what we call a normal distribution of values, and the reason why we call it a normal distribution is because the total area underneath the whole curve from negative infinity to positive infinity is going to be equal to 1. Remember, in order to find the area underneath the curve or a segment of the curve, let's say we want to find an area from, let's say, x equals 0 to x equals b, b being somewhere between 1 and 2 sigma, then we can find it by using this integral from, and of course our equation right here of the function is the same equation we have over there, and then this equation simplified becomes equal to this, where this is the error function. Now, if we get a computer, get a calculator, we can start plugging in values for b, and so b is usually expressed in terms of a fraction of a sigma. For example, let's say that b was 1.5 sigmas. What's the area underneath this curve as a function of the whole area? Of course, that would be a number less than 1, somewhere between 0 and 1. If b was equal to, let's say, 1.5 sigma, and that's why I'll show you how to use the table. So let's say, let b equal to 1.5 sigma, and we want to know what the area is, the blue area right here underneath the curve. So what we do then is we come up here to the table, and we find the equivalent fraction of sigma that's equal to b. In this case, it's 1.5 sigma, and we find out it's down here, right here. That means that the total area of the blue area right here, of the blue region, from 0 to b equal 1.5 sigma, is equal to 0 0.4332. In other words, this blue area right here, the blue area is equal to, relative to 1 being the whole area, is equal to 0 0.4332. 4332, which means 43.32% of the total area falls within 0 and b equals 1.5 sigma. And that's how we figure out what the relative area is underneath a normalized curve like that. We simply use a table of values. If you want to, we can go ahead and solve the integral, solve the error function for a particular value for b, a particular value for sigma, and then we can do that for each case, but of course using a table is a lot easier. Let's try a couple more. Let's say that we want to find the area by doing the first two sigma. So let me use a different color. Let's see if this color works. So let's say we will, we're going to let b equal to two sigma. And so now we want to find the pink area underneath the curve, which goes all the way out from 0 to b equals 2 sigma. So what would be the area now? So we're now to the pink area. <clears throat> so again, what we do is we find the value in the table for b. In this case, b is 2 sigma. So we come up here, 2 sigma is right over here. Then we come over here, so we know that the area is 0.4772. So the area is 0 0.4772, which means that 47.72% of the total area falls within those two limits from x equals 0 to x equals 2 sigma. And so therefore we can find any area near the curve simply by utilizing a table like that. And if you want to go out further than 3.0, which is 3 sigma as we call it, then of course you need to get another table to add some additional values. But notice that all the area between 0 and 3 sigma accounts for 49.87% of the total area, which is just about half, and of course that makes sense, because when you go out to, all the way out to infinity, the total area for half the curve would be one half, so therefore when we get out to 3 sigma, the area is 49.87%. When you go out to 2 sigma, the area is equal to 47.72%, and when you go out to 1 sigma, you can see that the area here would be 34.13%, and that's how we read the table. And that's where we find the value using the table of a normalized function like that, distribution function, I should call it. And that's how we do that.